What do you feel the impact of social media has been on the feminist movement and how have we responded to the opportunities and challenges? So, um, I mean, social media has had a huge impact on everything. Um, it certainly has had a huge impact on the women's sector. I would find it very difficult to define whether it's been positive or negative, if I'm being honest. Um, it, it's, it's a really tricky one because I feel like social media has allowed a lot of groups and organisations and individuals to have a voice when previously you were sort of relying on getting into the media, you know, you were relying in like producing like sophisticated, like other types of media yourself. So it really has opened things up. And I would say it definitely has helped amplify the voice of WRDA and other organisations. Um, and that's good because it helps you reach people. However, I unfortunately think there is a huge downside to social media because as I've just said, it's sort of given everyone a platform and uh, not all of those people are going to agree with WRDA and not all of those people are going to be nice people. Um, so it's a huge problem. Um, I think if you're not careful, it's very easy to get into, you know, arguments with trolls online. I think it's, and I think unfortunately, not enough is done when, you know, social media users are actually becoming abusive. Um, I think a lot of that is sort of just still tolerated. I think it's really hard to, you know, have any sort of success with reporting people and getting them banned, like a lot of the time, which is really unfortunate. And I think what we have also seen as well, um, is sometimes members of like the women's sector being specifically targeted with abuse, um, which has become really rampant and really, really nasty. And of course, as well, there's issues with um, actual defamation against both individuals and organizations in the women's sector. Um, and the problem there is like, even if you can sort of prove defamation has occurred, um, you know, there's not always much you can legally do because a lot of the people who are spreading that kind of misinformation, that kind of nastiness, are not people that is actually, you know, possible to sue because they don't, they don't have any assets. So like it's it's becomes like how do you actually get those sort of people to stop? It it's it's hugely tricky. So I mean I think my view would be yeah, using social media can definitely be a tool that can be used for good by organizations. But I think really around that, it's very important, I suppose, to ensure that staff members are being protected. And then also the staff members using social media are adequately, tra adequately trained so that when the negative stuff is happening, it is well managed and doesn't spin out of control. Now, sometimes it will spin out of control anyway, but in some cases there are stuff you can do to sort of limit the damage there. Um, so I think it's very important that organizations like WRDA have really stringent social media policies um and you know procedures and as well unfortunately i think it's also important that there is someone there to seek legal advice from when that becomes necessary um shouldn't be that way and i, I would like to see the social media platforms themselves start to manage things a, a better over time but at the moment unfortunately i don't really see that being what is happening oh but i will say this um Having engaged with WRDA's, you know, social media myself um, in a personal capacity and also seen it from the other side when I was working here, I do think it's an aspect of work that WRDA is doing really well. Um, and I think particularly, you know, going on to Instagram in recent years has been a really good move. And I absolutely love the sort of graphics that are being used at the minute. I think the WRDA branding comes across really, really well on social media. Um, so yeah, I can't fault what the staff are doing at all. I think they're doing a great job.